Hey guys, I'm back again, and this time with a query loop design using Generate Blocks. Today I'm going to walk through a certain design I created myself for a blog post page to outline all your latest articles. So here's the end result of what we're going to create today. As you can see, this is a blog page, and I've got six blog posts uh, queued up and created here in the new query loop design. So as you can see, there's a featured image. We've got a category, we've got the blog post title, an excerpt, and the date published. So there's a few tricks here. As you can see, uh, these are all the same height, and the date is always consistently at the bottom. So uh, there's a few tweaks. You've got to do that and use flex a little bit, and uh, let's go ahead and just dive in. So we'll go ahead and create a new page. We'll call this new blog query loop. And first we're going to add a container. And on this outer container, we're going to go 80, 20, 80, 20 on the padding. That's kind of my personal standard that I always use. Uh, we're going to insert another inner container. And in that inner container, we're going to insert the query loop. So you can go ahead and search it. Oops. And make sure you choose the blue one. That's the generate blocks query loop that we're going to be working with today. All right, so it gives you a few layouts to start with. You can start blank or you can start with some uh, preset ones. I always like to just start with one of the preset ones because it already gives me the blocks I need to use and work with. And if, and if there's any I don't want, I can just easily delete them. So I'm going to choose the two columns in featured image. So as you can see, it's already uh, creates sort of a default design for you. Um, it's not one I personally prefer, so of course we're going to redesign it and uh, make sure we match what we've worked with and created on this page here. So um, first, I'm going to open up the sidebar. When you're in Query Loop, uh, that's one of the things I always have to have open. I don't always have it when I'm building pages, but I always have this list view open with Query Loop just so I can see what I'm working with. Um, so the thing about Query Loop is you're really only ever working on one single layout at a time. And what happens is every layout that you create to this one post template container, it'll duplicate that across the whole page, all posts. So that's kind of why it's called a query loop. It loops out the, the design for every single post added to this loop, <laughs> to this query. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna wanna look at is the query loop uh, block here at the top. This, I actually only have six blog posts on this site um, just because it, they're, you know, dummy copy. So I'm gonna put in six posts per page. Um, so it only shows those six. Now, once we jump into the post template, we could start uh, diving into some of the design. So on this post template, we actually want this to be flex. Uh, later I'll help you understand why, but on this post template we're going to go display flex. And of course you can see it really skews our design and really screws it up. It doesn't look very good. And that's because direction is set to row. Row meaning everything is set from left to right, but we want it to stack top to bottom like a column. So we're going to select column. And then we want the items to actually be left aligned, so we're going to say flex start. And then we can jump into a few other things. So um, because of our design, when we look at over here, you see that the featured image actually goes all the way to the edge. However, the copy is inset and has padding around it. So what we need to do on this outer template is remove the padding. So make sure you got post template container selected and delete all the padding. So of course, now our text and everything is, is flush up against the sides, which we don't want, but we can address that in a moment. Um, <clears throat> so on this post template, we want to add the dark outline, right? So if we go to border size, we're gonna go ahead and do a two pixel border. We can hit the link button and it'll do two pixels all the way around. Um, that border color, I'm gonna do this dark gray. And then um, 
Next, I'm going to dive into doing some of this text. So here's our headline, uh, which is right now in H2. A lot of times I normally choose H3s for blog post titles. Um, and I'm gonna do a few design adjustments. What I'm gonna do is come over to font weight and we're gonna make that bold. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it black. I think that's fine. Yeah, that works. Uh, we're gonna make it a little bit smaller. Let's go like 24 pixels. Uh, we don't need it so large. <clears throat> And then we can do a bottom margin of 20 pixels. And now we need to push this away from the edges so that there's some spacing around it, like our example. Um, so I'm gonna go 30 pixels left and right. Now if we come to the date, we actually want this to be at the bottom of our container. So I'm gonna push that down, select it, hit that arrow so it goes below our excerpt. And I'm also going to go 30 and 30. And we can go ahead and leave bottom 30 on that one as well. Um, I think we can probably bump up this font size just a hair. And let's go ahead and make this uh, semi bold. All right, that looks good. Um, now to the excerpt, uh, we can go ahead and make this font size a little bit smaller. Let's go. 14, yeah, 14 looks a little small, let's go 15. Um, and then we'll also need to work on the margin. So we'll go 30, let's do 20 on the bottom and 30 on the left again. Um, so you can see it's kind of taken shape here. We've got our headline, our excerpt. Um, now what you see is this read more text. I really don't want that. I don't care for it personally. So if you come down in this block, and there's an option right here, use default more link. Uncheck that and it'll automatically go away. Excerpt length, I'm gonna lower this down to 40. Uh, I just think 55 is a little bit too much. And then what we need to also do, we can save the draft here so we save our work. What we need to do next is create this category um, block so that the category for each post comes through just above the title. So um, what we could do is come to the headline, add in a new headline, hit enter, add a new headline. We're gonna make this a paragraph block. Um, let's go ahead and add our left and right. And this will be dynamic data. So um, first let's go ahead and push it up. So it's above the title, but we're gonna come down to dynamic data. And because we want the categories to automatically populate for each post, we're gonna enable dynamic data, current post, and say list of terms. And the taxonomy, we're gonna say categories. So now you can see on all these posts, dogs, blog, generate blocks, generate blocks, dogs, blog, all the categories automatically pulling in. So now we really just need to style it so it looks like our examples. So it looks like we got all caps, blue background, a little bit of highlight, uh, rounded edges. Um, so let's go, say, 3838 with vertical radius about 3. We'll say background uh, blue, text, uh, let's do this light, light gray. Um, and then transform uppercase. Letter spacing, let's do about 0.25 EMs. And then let's go down to 12 pixel font size. And there it is. So uh, it's looking pretty good. You know, I think let's just compare. It's looking good, got your text, um, got the featured image. Let's save our draft, make sure we don't lose anything. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is you can actually dictate the size of these featured image in every query loop so that they're consistently the same and fit. Um, so if you click that image block and we're just gonna mess with the height, we're actually not gonna touch the width. Um, we're gonna do say about 
300 pixels. And now you can see it's squished, right? Look at my face. <laughs> These are all squished and that's because the object fit is not set. So we're gonna say object fit cover. And automatically it's gonna cover those to be in the center. Um, but what I'm actually gonna do now, because if we save the draft and come to the preview, um, this is two by two. And our example is three by three. So we need to add another column to this so it creates three in a row. So if you come to your post template, go to the grid item width, and right now it's set at 50%. We want it to be 33%. So as soon as you touch that, it's gonna make it three wide. It's just exactly what we want. But now um, our featured images are actually a little bit taller than I wanted. So we're gonna go down to like 250. Uh, I like that a lot better. Looks looks a little cleaner. It doesn't need to be so big. So uh, we're gonna save draft and open up our page. It looks like we're almost there, uh, but there's a couple little tweaks. So as you can see, um, the boxes are not lined up all the way across on the bottom. So we need to do a couple things. I also noticed the background color on here is not white. So in the post template, um, let's go background and clear it out. So now they're white. And here's a trick for getting the date to always appear at the bottom. First, we gotta go to post template and we're gonna say height 100%. And so when you click percent, you can always click it here and change it. But as you type percent, it will automatically change. So Height is 100%, so now it'll always keep those boxes consistently the same. But we really want the date to be at the bottom so they're evenly across. So when you click that headline on the date and you go to the spacing, margin top, we're gonna say auto. And there it goes, it pushes them directly to the bottom. And it's perfect how we want it. We can come to our page, hit refresh, and there it is, it's looking pretty good. So uh, we'll compare. Looks like maybe this actually is a little bit smaller on our example. We'll just see if we can get it pixel perfect here. All right, that's looking pretty solid. So next, we're gonna wanna look at this on tablet and mobile and make sure it looks good across all devices. So with a block um, selected, let's go ahead and hit tablet. Um, as you can see, that's just way too squished for tablet. We probably only wanna go 50%, you know, two by two maximum. So on tablet, we can go ahead and hit 50 and select it and I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. I don't think it's too scrunched. Um, we could even maybe work on these images. Um, we could say on tablet, we can make them 225 maybe so that the ratio is a little bit more similar to desktop. Um, but otherwise, I'm pretty happy with everything on that. So let's go ahead and go to mobile. Um, looks pretty decent. I'd say again, let's tweak the image to be 200 pixels height. Um, terms look good, text, title looks good. Um, yeah, everything looks really solid. So there you have it. We've got a query loop design with generate blocks and save the draft, refresh it. We can go ahead and go into the customizer and just take a quick look at it on uh, tablet and mobile. So now here we have tablet. Looks great. And mobile. Looks perfect. So there was my query loop design for you using generate blocks. I hope maybe you learned a few things along the way and see how much fun actually using the query loop block is. We'll see you next time and thanks again for watching.